Mass the fluctuations in a gas. Consider an ideal gas of capital N molecules, which is an equilibrium within a container of volume V sub zero. Denote by N the number of molecules located within any subvolume V of this container. The probability P that a given molecule is located within this subvolume V is then given by V divided by V sub zero. What is the mean number n bar of molecules located within V? Express your answer in terms of capital N, V sub zero and V. Find the standard deviation delta tilde n in the number of molecules located within the subvolume V. Hence calculate the ratio standard deviation to the mean value, expressing your answer in terms of capital N, V sub zero and V. What does the answer to part B become when V is much less than V sub zero, what value should the standard deviation assume when V is close to sub zero, uh, V sub zero? Does the answer to part B agree with this expectation? Okay, so um, we have a container. It's an isolated container. or the container is in equilibrium with the surroundings. And we have capital N molecules inside this uh, container. The container has volume V sub zero. We're considering a region that has volume V and we have molecules inside this container, capital N, total number of molecules, we call n the number of molecules in the subvolume v and p is the probability that a given molecule uh, is located within the subvolume v probability of a molecule being in subvolume v this is v divided by v0 and it should be because uh, we have equilibrium therefore we should have a uniform distribution of gas molecules so the number of molecules in the subvolume v should be proportional to the volume of this region so it's it should be uh, v divided by v0 the probability of having a molecule in this sub volume so uh, similar to the previous problem where i have defined a number uh, u for the ideal system of spin one half particles i'm going to define again the same parameter u uh, u sub i is equal to 1 if the ith molecule is in subvolume v. It is 0 if the ith molecule is not in subvolume v. Okay? So then you can see that the number of molecules located within V will be the sum over all molecules. So I have to look at all molecules from 1 to capital N and check the value of U sub I. And if it is 1, that particular molecule is going to contribute to the value of N. And therefore... Uh, I have a similar situation here to the previous problem where n was sum uh, over i from 1 to n, uh, capital N, u sub i. So all the results of the previous problem still apply. So I find that n bar is equal to uh, sum over i equals 1 to n u bar uh, because for the ith molecule, if I take the average value of this it will be u bar 
same for all molecules because I have identical molecules that are non-interacting so this u bar value should be the same for all molecules therefore for n bar I'm going to get capital N times u bar and what is u bar it is uh, either 1 with probability p or 0 with probability q so it is p therefore n bar is equal to capital N p or I can write n bar as capital N times v divided by v sub 0 which is written in terms of capital N v and v sub 0 as requested as required in the problem statement and in part b I need to find the standard deviation uh, now for the standard deviation uh, since it's exactly the same scenario as the previous problem let me find out what I have uh, learned uh, I found that the variance of uh, u was pq uh, and the variance of n was a capital N pq so here I will have the same situation uh, since delta n uh, square uh, bar the variance will be equal to capital N pq c problem um, 2.14 so I have the standard deviation of n is equal to square root n capital N p q so let me calculate by substituting here for uh, p v divided by v sub 0 and for q I have to substitute 1 minus p and what is 1 minus p square root capital N v divided by v0 1 minus v divided by v0 this will give us square root capital N v divided by v sub 0 v0 minus v divided by v0 so we will get a v0 uh, square um, okay so uh, for square root mpq once again for p I have uh, For p I have a v, o, v divided by v0 and for 1 minus p I have 1 minus v divided by v sub 0 so by substituting these I find the uh, standard deviation of n to be 1 over v0 square root capital N v v0 minus v so this is uh, the standard deviation of n but in the same uh, part uh, we, we need to calculate the ratio um, delta tilde n to n bar so let's calculate the ratio then delta tilde n divided by n bar we can calculate uh, you can see that n bar has a v0 in it also so it's going to be square root n v v0 minus v the v zeros will cancel divided by capital N v so this ratio will be a square root v0 minus v divided by capital N v so um, let me rewrite this result here it is square root v0 minus v divided by capital N v now part c of the problem 
uh, asks what happens in the limit v is much less than v0. So if v is much less than v0, v0 minus v can be approximated to be v0. Then you have delta tilde n divided by n bar uh, becoming square root uh, v0 divided by and v uh, or basically this is a uh, square root uh, 1 over capital N P and and P was a uh, n bar which is square root 1 over n bar so um, delta tilde n over n bar uh, becomes 1 over square root and bar in this limit and in part D uh, what value should the standard deviation assume when V becomes V0 okay so if V is equal to V0 all molecules must be in in the uh, volume v equals v0 so that we shouldn't have any uh, standard deviation in n n must be equal to capital n so uh, let's check what happens if uh, v0 is equal to v for uh, the standard deviation so uh, standard deviation delta tilde and uh, we have found to be 1 over v sub 0 square root of n v uh, v sub 0 minus v so if v0 is equal to v you can see that delta tilde n the standard deviation becomes 0 as expected so basically uh, we can see that the standard the value that standard deviation assumes uh, does agree with the expectation from part b the standard deviation should become zero so we have considered density fluctuations in a gas an ideal gas in a volume v sub zero there is a, a sub volume v of this container since it's an equilibrium there is a uniform distribution of gas molecules uh, so the number of gas molecules in sub volume V should be equal to capital N times V over V0. Well, P is the probability of a molecule being in the sub volume V over V0. Indeed, if we define a variable U sub I to be 1 if the ith molecule is in sub volume V and 0 if it is not in sub volume V, such that the mean value of U, U sub I is the same for all molecules because we have identical molecules identical uh, free non-interacting molecules that's an because it's an ideal gas uh, we should have the mean value of n to be capital n times u bar which is p so which that's capital n times p or capital n times v over v0 as expected because it's a uniform distribution now, uh, what is the standard deviation of n? So I remember that in problem 2.14, I have exactly the same situation uh, where I have found for a system of capital N identical spin one half particles by defining the same variable u, I have obtained the result uh, that the delta n square bar is uh, capital N p q. So it's the same thing here. I should have capital N P Q. Uh, so for the standard deviation, I will have square root of the variance. So by substituting for P V divided by V sub zero and for Q one minus P, which is one minus V divided by V sub zero, I obtain for standard deviation one over V sub zero square root capital N V parentheses V zero minus V. Uh, and the ratio 
standard deviations to mean value ratio is square root v0 minus v divided by capital N v. And if uh, v is much less than v0, v0 minus v is approximated to be v0, then this ratio becomes 1 over square root n bar. Uh, so for a large volume, and if I'm looking at a small sub-volume in this large volume V0, I find that the uh, fluctuation, the relative fluctuation amplitude is 1 over square root n bar. So this is a relative uh, fluctuation amplitude actually that we're calculating. Now, if V is equal to V sub 0, all molecules must be in there. So capital N it should be the number of molecules in that sub-volume. So N must be equal to capital N with no standard deviation. And if, if we substitute V is equal to V sub 0 in the standard deviation that we calculated in part B, indeed we find that the standard deviation becomes 0 as expected.